the Big 12 standings, and you will find the Aggies of Texas A&M. A 10 and 1 start in the leadership of Joseph Jones as the Aggies looking forward to contending for a Big 12 championship. The non-conference schedule was not as kind to the Texas Tech Red Raiders. The Generals' troops have struggled at times and start conference play with more questions than answers. Tonight, everyone starts even as the Big 12 season begins with Texas A&M hosting Texas Tech on FSN. On the other hand, no threes at all, but he's great at coming off of picks and getting open in the lane, and he's the shorter version of the Red Raider scoring attack. The Aggies have two more scores that are also in that top 20 group of players. Joseph Jones in the middle and A.C. Law, who's all over the court. A.C. Law's Mr. Outside. He's jet quick, a good assist man. He's very consistent in scoring, having hit double figures in nine of their ten games. Joe Jones, on the other hand, he is fantastic in the paint. He's a tough matchup for everybody. Very strong, very active. He leads the Big 12 in free throws attempted. Stay with us. We'll have the tip and all the action as the Big 12 season begins on FSN. The all-new Ram Mega Cab has an available Cummins diesel, the only reclining rear seats, and the most rear seat legroom in a truck. It has the world's biggest cab. Hey, <laughs> guys. Hi. There. Okay. Who's riding shotgun? I'm uh, good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Hi, honey. Comfy back there? The Dodge Ram Mega Cab. Yeah, it's that big. <laughs> This week on FSN's Pro Football Preview, our insiders get you up to speed on the playoff picture. We're not worried about the division race. We just got to go win. With up to the minute, breaking news. I guarantee that I will not be stopped Sunday. And expert analysis. This team right now, it's shell shock. Interviews that take you inside the locker room. I got the whole pack because I can do what I'm... The weekly preview show that can't be missed. FSN Pro Football Preview, Sunday on FSN. A&M has exactly 801 fewer wins in his college career than Bob Knight as we're just about set to go. The Aggies will be dressed in the home white, Texas Tech in the black, and the tip is controlled, and they may do it over, or they may have been a violation on it, so it will go on the side to Texas Tech. Their lineup will have Jarius Jackson, Martin Zeno, Daryl Dora, John Plefka, and Michael Prince. While the Yankees will have A.C. Law, Dominique Kirk, Joseph Jones, Marlon Pompey, and Chris Walker in the starting lineups as the game gets underway with the Raiders with the basketball first. Texas A&M coming out in their very aggressive half-court man-to-man pressure D. They lead the league in fewest points allowed so far in this young season. Daryl Dora with a move, tries to slide a pass in, and it's taken away. That's another thing they're good at. Marlon Pompey with the steal. Now they lead the conference in the steals per game at 22. That was a nice job by Marlon Pompey playing the Aggie team defense. Jones gives it up to Law who sees the baseline and is held out on the court by Martin Zeno who picks up the foul. I said A.C. Law was quick. He showed it right there, but let's take a look at this tough Texas A&M team defense. A little muffed handling of the ball by Martin Zeno. Pompey gets the steal. Aggies come down for the first attempt of the game. Law off the inbound. Oh, it's a nice soft bounce. And the first two points of the game go to Texas A&M. A.C. Law has scored in double figures nine out of the ten games in which he's played. He missed one because of concussion earlier this season. Martin Zeno working out top. Gives up the dribble. Sneaks inside the basket, the first basket of the game for Jarius Jackson. Yeah, great pass there by John Plefka. Associate head coach Pat Knight told me before the game, this young man is really coming on strong, and he had a great week of practice. Casey Law pumps it in. And a strong move, but no luck by Jones. And the rebound comes off to Tech. With the carom with Zeno, and here comes Texas Tech. up quarter tight at two. out on that uh, corner. Brings it around to Prince. Yeah, Michael Prince is a surprise starter for the Red Raiders. He hadn't started any games this year. 
Nora gives it up. This is a three by Jackson. Well, he now has 29 threes on the season. One of the great pure shooters in college basketball, hitting at 45% from Trey Land so far this year. Dominique Kirk slides it into Walker back outside the law. This is Walker. Is it Jones. Oh, he got position. But he couldn't get the finish. Tries to go up with a follow, and it's knocked out of bounds. It'll be the Aggies' ball. He had great position. He's had a couple of shots that have just rolled off the rim. Well, Joe Jones is a great percentage shooter. In fact, he's one of the tops in the nation in field goal accuracy. He's missed two point-blank shots so far here today. But Chris Walker had a terrific assist. They're going to miss it from the outside. The rebound comes down to Jackson. Jackson on the attack for Texas Tech. Sneaks it through the wicket as Plethka couldn't bend over far enough. The junior from New Britain, Connecticut, turns it over back to the Aggies. Down by three. Well, we, we mentioned earlier the Aggies forced more turnovers than anybody in the Big 12 Conference. Tech has three here in the early going. You mentioned the change in the lineup with Michael Prince and Terry Martin out. He's out to, well, on a coach's decision uh, prior to this game. Yeah, Terry Martin played all 40 minutes in the regular <laughs> game against UT El Paso. Very surprising him not being in the lineup today. Pompe tries to make a move around, but he is held by Daryl Dora. That's his first. And it will be retained by a &M. There's Billy Gillespie, another 10-1 start, 31-11 in his second year at Texas A&M. Oh, what a fantastic job he's done. He was the Big 12 Conference Coach of the Year last season after Texas A&M went 0-16 the year before he got here. He led him to an 8-8 conference mark last season. He has won 61 games in his college career. It's starting at Texas El Paso. Bob Knight has won 862. 862. Texas Tech with a basketball on the misplay, and it's still a three-point Tech lead. Jerry is Jackson. Mentioned Bob Knight, the winningest active coach in America. Gives it up to Dora. Dora looking in, nothing there. Zeno from the left, uh, from the right side. Boy, oh, he's got such a quick release. The southpaw. Not a three-point okay. shooter, as we said. He won't go out that far. He has no threes on this season. A.C. Law at the top of the circle rolls off, and the rebound and foul will be on Jones on the rebound that was claimed nicely by Perkin. Terrific job of blocking out by the junior college transfer from Santa Fe Community College down in Florida. Eddie Smith is into the uh, Aggie lineup. He replaced Walker. Texas Tech will inbound the ball, facing some pressure. Martin Zeno doesn't really use the screen, but a defense uh, pressure by AC Law forced him to pick up the foot and travel. Turnover. See, when Bob Knight elected to not play Terry Martin in today's game, he's put Prince in the lineup, who's really not a ball handler, so now it all falls on the shoulders of Zeno and Jackson, neither one of them pure point guards. Eddie Smith of Springfield, Illinois. Senior gives it up at the top, Pompey. Now quick move to the baseline, a swing around to the open man. It's Kirk behind the line, and the captain won't get it. And Jones may be called for the push. Ooh, that's big that's right gonna there. That's going to be his second foul. Texas Tech doing a terrific job of blocking out on their defensive boards. Watch down inside. We Ooh, might. That was a tough call, really. We might mention Texas A&M leads the Big 12 Conference in most fouls per game, but they also go to the free throw line more than any other team in the league. That means they attack the bucket. That was a forced effort by Jackson. The rebound comes down to AC Law. And of course, the offense hasn't gotten going for the Ag. So AC says, oh, the basket still won't handle it. Aggie shots it at three that have rolled out. Here's Martin Zeno, partly blocked, followed up by Zeno. A great active body by Martin Zeno staying after the miss. Yes, you're right, Greg. The Aggies have missed three point blank layups here in the first four minutes of this game. Just rolling off the rim. Here's Kirk to swing around the law. Nice ball movement by Texas A&M. Terrific spacing. Jones this time makes sure it goes home his first basket of the game and makes it nine to four. Boy, that is a tough play to defend. High post to low post. Jackson. You know, back out the door. Dora fakes his man in the air and Pompey will be called for the foul. 
Aggies like to play that belly button defense means you get as tight as you can right there. Pompey a little too close, bumping him with his chest. Got a timeout. We'll have some change in the lineup when we return. Right now we look at the scoreboard. Exactly 15 minutes to play in the first half. Texas Tech on top by five. first encounter was a thriller. Two gladiators who never backed down, displaying raw power and fierce intensity. Now, three-time world champion Eric Morales and two-time world champion Manny Pacquiao are ready to do battle again. Morales, Pacquiao 2 in a 12-round championship bout. Saturday, January 21st, live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. Live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View, Channel 123. Morales, Pacquiao 2, round 13 begins now. Came in running. The Ultimate Warrior is totally out of control. Took the WWE by storm. He has a natural charisma. And came crashing down. I had to clench my fist and stop myself from destroying it. He's left the legacy and it's not a pretty one. Join WWE Fanatic Series all January as they reveal the truth behind one of the most controversial superstars of all time in The Self-Destruction of the Ultimate Warrior. Playing this month on DirecTV. The Big 12's 10-year anniversary, all season long on FSN. Back at Rita Rita in College Station, the Texas Aggies up on the Red Raiders 9-4. Let's take a look at how the Aggies scored their last basket. Nice spacing. They popped the wing man out. You're going to see Joe Jones set a down pick for Marlon Pompey flashing high. Watch the pass to the high post, and then the screener right here is going to open up and get high post to low post pass. This is a terrific play, very tough to defend. Just watch as the big-bodied Joe Jones shapes up for the easy Aggie bucket. Nice execution by Texas A&M. Only their second basket in the first five minutes of action. They're two for eight. Texas Tech four out of six. The average uh, in a game is pretty good. 30 points in a tank. Meanwhile, on the other end, we've got that's Mark Zeno's, uh, Zeno. Yeah, that's his second turnover here in the early going, something the Red Raiders cannot afford. That's the fourth Red Raider turnover. Aggies only have one. They've been out rebounded six to two. Kovalaskis is into the game, number 44 for Texas A&M. And Kovalaskis is the big junior college transfer from Barton County Community College up in Kansas. They think he's got a big upside. Dora with the miss on the Kovalaskis shot. Now Prince finds Dora, who finds Prince and a foul. Whoa. They're going to get two plus possibly one more. What a beautiful job by Daryl Dora, the junior from Gonzales, Texas, making the nice quick shovel pass. Just a little touch pass over to John Plefka under the bucket. Nice execution. Beautiful job by Daryl Dora. Good job by Plefka making the quick move to the basket without the ball. Plefka, big 6 8 junior from Connecticut, makes it the largest lead of the game. Eight points, three points on the board for the man who averages five and a half, and it's 12-8. Raiders. Oh, back out the law, and Kavaloskis wasn't looking for that second pass, and it goes out of bounds. Now Kavaloskis backing up on that play, trying to get lower position on the block, and AC Law didn't give him time to get there. Kenneth White coming into the ball game for the Aggies. You've got uh, two substitute guards in the lineup now for Texas A&M. Eddie Smith on the ball right now. Junior College Player of the Year last season at Moberly, Missouri, Juco. You saw the night with 98 wins since he's been with uh, Texas Tech. He's 18 wins away from Dean Smith's all-time record. He's going to have to have one heck of a season to get there this year. There's a little hook inside by Dora won't go. And it goes out of bounds, and so it's going to be retained by the they're taken by the Aggies. Fortieth year of head coaching in college basketball for Bob Knight. 
12 4, Raiders on top. You see the shooting percentage, not good for the Aggies at all. A couple of them can roll outs. Here's White. Dead straight on, couldn't get it down. The rebound taken off by Plufka. Aggies taking those outside shots a little bit too quick right now with Joe Jones on the bench. They've got to get good shots. Jones has two fouls. Jackson, and he is grabbed, and a foul will be called. Looks like it's going to be on Eddie Smith. Well, Eddie Smith is super quick for Texas A&M. Mentioned he was last year's National Junior College Player of the Year. We see the foul there. Jay Jackson took it to the rack. Martin Zeno. Outside by Jackson. Won't go. Kept alive. Hit on the Aggies. Going to the basketball on the Pompey rebound. Smith looking in for Kalavoski's trying to get a position around the white. Smith going to try to use some speed to penetrate, laying it back out to Kirk for three, but that's not going to go. And a rebound off the door. Very bad, poor shooting from outside. Actually, the Aggies not been a bad three-point shooting team this year, 35%. But they've not found the range here in this game so far. They've certainly gotten good looks at the basket. Just can't knock them down, Greg. Pass sneaks inside. Knocked away, and finally a foul will be whistled. That's one of those inadvertent oops. I'm in the air. I'm going to crush him. And the foul was called on the Aggies' Kirk. Kirk uh, took the wrong end of that. That was his first. Aggies now have 16 fouls. That's a bunch in the first, uh, what's that, six and a half minutes of the ball game. Yeah. Josh Carter has come into the lineup for the Aggies as they're still checking out the effects of that collision. Now you mentioned Josh Carter coming into the game for Texas A&M. He's considered their best pure shooter, just a freshman from Lake Highlands High School in the Richardson School District right outside of Dallas. He can flat fill it up. Had a chance to watch him practice this morning, and he was just terrific. Jack will inbound. Full 35 seconds to work with. Jarius Jackson will inbound. And Martin Zeno. This is that in your shirt defense we're talking about. It also results in fouls, but it also, more importantly, can result in disrupting a lot of offenses. So far, Tech has been able to maneuver through it enough to an eight-point lead. The play with defense on their end as well. Interesting matchup here. That's White. White reaching in is going to be called for the foul. Texas Tech play. does such a great job of screening away from the ball. Billy Gillespie doesn't like the call. Bowden Knight seems quite satisfied. Let's take a look at it again. Kenneth White trying to fight his way around Martin Zeno, but referee called him for pushing in the back and reaching. And the bonus, Zeno's left-hander is up and good. He has five points. He had a 28-point game earlier this year against uh, Georgia Southern. He's averaging 15.9, as we talked about the outset of the game, one of the top scorers in the Big 12 during non-conference play. In fact, he's number 10 in the league, Jay Jackson, number four. 14 to four, 10-point lead, largest so far for Tech. 14 to two run has given him that lead. 11.55 remaining in the half. White maybe got away with a step, but still couldn't get away with the ball rolling in on the rim. That's about four that just rolled over the top and out on the Aggie end. Door. And on the give and go basket to the hole, Zeno picks up his points. And it's a 12 point lead. These are Mountain to be the largest deficits the Aggies have faced all year in any single game. Well, they've got a lot of deficits they have to overcome. They're not used to playing without Joe Jones on the floor. That's the biggest deficit. And the 12 point differential is another huge factor. Tarter, he had to throw that one up. He was hoping to draw a foul, did not. And Tech has it, Jarius Jackson. Dora. Now Jackson. That was lobbed out of bounds. Tech will have a couple of, or Texas A&M will have a couple of changes in the lineup to see if they can't turn things. Right now with a timeout, 10.54 to go in the half. The Aggies have been held to four. Raiders lead by 12. See you tonight. Okay.
Introducing the all-new Suzuki Grand Vitara. You want more out of life? Suzuki's giving you the green light. Go! Lease the all-new Suzuki Grand Vitara for just $1.99 a month for 30 months. Hurry in. The Riviera's most exclusive casino hosts the world's toughest poker tournament. Riverbell.info presents the Monte Carlo Millions. The world's top players come to the most glamorous city in the world to battle for a $3 million purse. He's all in! in. Riverbell.info presents the Monte Carlo Millions. Premieres January 14th on FSN. The Rockets play on FSN Houston. Closer to full strength, T-Mac and the Rockets are primed to climb the division. Will it be enough to stop the Nuggets' pursuit to get back in the black? Sunday on FSN Houston. The Panthers are thinking Super Bowl once again. While the Giants look for a return to glory. The NFC wildcard on Fox, America's most watched NFL network. Well, while Texas A&M is focused on defense early on, they've learned to Texas Tech and play a little bit of a 2 16 to 4 Tech on top. Well, and Texas Tech has helped their cause because of their great motion offense. I want you to watch Martin Zeno right here. He's the game's leading scorer with eight points. He's going to set a screen and then pop back out and then watch him break back door for an easy bucket. He's terrific at moving without the basketball. Just watch number three now. He pops back out and then he breaks hard to the basket without the ball. Terrific assist from Daryl Dora at 6'9 to the 6'5 Zeno breaking hard to the rack for two of his eight. Here you see the run that the uh, Raiders have on. So. Aggies make a couple of changes. Martellus Bennett, their outstanding two-sport star, he is in at one of the forward spots. And let's see, Carter has returned to the game. Jones is also back in the game with uh, Kirk and Law in the backcourt. Largest deficit the Aggies have faced this year. They're down by nine at one point in the last game, which they lost at Pacific, their own defeat. That's kicked, and it will be retained by the Aggies. Aggies have three of their original starters on the floor right now. Kirk, Jones, and Law, but you've got uh, Martellus Bennett, the big freshman football star, on the court also for the first time right now. Jones. Two freshmen in the lineup now for Texas A&M, Carter and Bennett. Quick, quick. A.C. Law gives it up to Kirk, back to A.C. A.C. makes a fake move, doesn't go. Carter misses, and the long rebound is slapped into the corner where it's corralled by Daryl Dorr. Aggies now only 2 of 14 on field goal attempts. That'll get you in a big hole real fast. They're fortunate that Texas Tech has five turnovers. Zeno escapes the tie-up. Dora. Got a step on the baseline, now spins back, whips it up over Jonathan, and it goes out of bounds off Kurt's hands, and so Tech will retain it. Daryl Dora is really playing well here today for Texas Tech. He doesn't have any points, but he's got two terrific assists. He's moving well with the ball. Just a terrific 6'9 junior. Playing very, very well today for Texas Tech. French dunks it cross court, and that'll be a foul card on Jackson. Uh, just, when I, just when I was <laughs> bragging on Daryl Dora, <laughs> as Billy Gillespie looks on, Dora made the bad pass leading to the turnover for Texas Tech, turnover number six. Yeah, the crowd reacted because they were afraid. It was because the Aggies were on defense. It was going to be against them. But it was actually on Jackson trying to get into position. So he get, picks up his first foul, and the Aggies have the ball. Aggies only have four points in the first 10 minutes and 15 seconds of the contest. Bennett tripped, tried to throw the ball up, hoped to draw something, did not. Texas Tech with a basketball, just another miss. Dora with that fake move, now uses a little quickness to the basket, and Dora is on the board. That was a, Greg, that was a great ball fake by Daryl Dora. I hope we'll have a chance to look at that again. Got the defender off the ground and just went right around him. 
Bennett takes the pass in tight and is fouled. Let's take a look at that last basket by Daryl Doar. He's right here. Now let's watch it. Let's go watch him when he gets the ball. This is a terrific fundamental move. Fake that ball up in the air, get your defender out of position, and then drive it to the basket. Terrific fundamental move by Daryl Dora. Any young folks at home watching, learn to do that. You'll get a lot of one-step advantages to the basket. Dior Lohorn is in the game for Texas Tech, and the miss, he's number 21. Came in during the dead ball. Nine minutes and about five seconds to go here in the first half, and it's 18 to four, and that wide pass is safe. But it's to Walker who just came back in the game. He lays it off for the basket to come. Well, there's points off the turnovers at seven now for Texas Tech. If they weren't shooting so well, they'd be in big trouble. 18 to six with 8.45. The crowd is hoping that's the start of something here. Zeno. And they give off to Jackson. Nice cut to the basket. That's a trademark of this offense. Pass and cut. And they've gotten some good cuts and good passes. 20 to 6. And they got a turnover. Calming the ball is the call. AC Law is the left hander that went with his right hand that time. We're going to see this last Texas Tech turnover. Chris Walker on the steal. Nice shovel pass. Kicking it off to uh, Carter for the easy two. Kirk will leave the lineup. Pompey back into the game for Texas A&M. So they add some size. 8.27 to go in the half. Martin Zeno. Kufka. Zeno again with the ball. Working on Pompey. 33 is Lequente White is into the game for Texas Tech. He's missed a lot of time with an injury. And the ball is finally kicked out of bounds. Nine on the shot clock. Texas Tech retains possession. Lohorn, the freshman from California, was positioned well inside then for Texas Tech. They just couldn't get it into him. Quinte White has it blocked. By Carter, here comes the, the Aggies now. Carter sets up behind the line, right in. That's the Josh Carter I was telling you about. He's the surprise of the year for Texas A&M, a great pure shooter. It's 20 to nine with 7:39. Obviously, the Aggie offense has not worked well, but the defense has been working well enough. And just a couple of baskets, and they're back in it. And there's some defense. Timeout has to be called by Zeno as he's in tight, picked up by Pompey. So the defense didn't get the turnover because he called the timeout, but that's the kind of defense that uh, Bob Knight's teams are used to playing now when you face it. And it's really only an 11 point game. We're in the first half. Billy Gillespie, we just saw Josh Carter hit a three. He's got five points, and he had some thoughts earlier today with Jim about Mr. Carter. You got to watch a player play if they don't dunk it all the time, and if they don't run real fast, and if they don't cut real fast, and those kind of things. Sometimes those things go overlooked, but he can he can do all those things, and that gives him an opportunity. Uh, he's going to be a good player for us this year. He's going to be a great player in the future because of the of the skill that he possesses, and he'll continue to work on those and improve them. Lake Highlands High School, Josh Carter, All-Stater. Yeah, Billy Gillespie recruited his brother Warren to the University of Illinois back when Billy was an assistant there, so he knew the Carter family quite well. What an advantage to get a player like Josh Carter. Got another brother, Kevin, who's at uh, a and Commerce. The pass is taken away. It went off the back of uh, Pompey and picked off by A.C. Law. Again, the Aggies can get it inside double digits with a basket here. 7.04 to go in the first half. And that's eight turnovers now for Texas Tech. That right there and just hit the Aggie defender in the back. Not a good pass at all for the Red Raiders. Looking at Jones. He's got it. Now the collapsing defense. Jones misses one tight. The foot is in. Now Jones was actually triple teamed in that possession, but went right back up, exploded between the three black shirt Red Raiders defenders for the easy bucket. The Aggies have cut, which was once a 14-point deficit, down to nine with 6.33 to go in the first half. There's the back cut, but it's intercepted, knocked loose. Walker's on the court, knocked loose again. You're talking about hustle. And finally, it goes in tight. Walker with a block, but a foul will be called. 
Walker was right there. Crowd didn't like it, but Zeno will get the foul call. He'll be at the line. Well, this is an understatement, but these striped shirts are definitely letting them play here this afternoon. Good gosh. Lots of bumping and bushing. We'll take a break before the free throws are shot. 6.21 to go. First half. Tech over the Aggies by nine. Who will be a national champion? Follow the action at the 2006 NCAA Division I Women's Golf Championship Central Regional, hosted by Texas A&M University College Station. Top collegiate golfers will tee it up May 11th through 13th at Traditions at Texas A&M. For more information, call 888-99-AGGIE or log on to NCAAsports.com. Sports in Texas. It's High School Spotlight on FSN Southwest. Our spotlight shines on the best and brightest athletes and coaches our state has to offer. Watch and see why no one covers high school sports like FSN Southwest. The best in the Big 12 Conference is on Big 12 Showcase. On location, Showcase has highlights, exclusive features and interviews, and the latest from every sport in the Big 12. Big 12 Showcase, Fridays and Saturdays on FSN Southwest. Tech leads by nine. This weekend, it's a doubleheader on ACC Sunday Night Hoops, beginning with 11th-ranked Boston College taking on Georgia Tech. And top-ranked Duke looks to remain undefeated when they battle 23rd-ranked Wake Forest. Coverage begins with the Acura College Hoops tip-off show tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central right here on FSN Southwest on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. What an aggressive hustle play on the other end of the moment. Now, let us show you why Coach Billy Gillespie loves that guy right there, Chris Walker, the first one on the floor. Now, look who's back under the bucket going for the block. He did pick up the foul, but that's Mr. Hustle for Texas A&M basketball, he, Chris Walker. He's a walk-on who played at the University of Dallas, came here for a couple years, was on the championship intramural team when Billy uh, came in as coach, and he decided to come out for the club, made the team last year, and was a starter most of the year. Billy says he's really my powerless forward only because he's not suited size-wise, but, man, he's a hustler and he can play. Well, and he's got great determination. He had a serious summer knee injury that uh, had to require an operation, and uh, he's made the rehab very quickly. They didn't expect to get him back this soon in the season, but as I said earlier, he's, he's very tough, and he's a big part of this Aggie basketball program. 0 for 2 for Zeno with the rebound into the corner and a whistle. Timeout called by Texas Tech as uh, Plefka was surrounded. Zeno, really a great free throw shooter, 79%, but he misses two in a row. Yeah, he's third in the Big 12 in free throw accuracy. You can tell he was very upset with himself off of those two consecutive misses. You know, a little bit about else about Walker. Obviously, when he stepped up in this level to play uh, Big 12 basketball, that was a bigger level than when he had played at the University of Dallas. But when he was there, he was a big scorer. Look who's here. Wow, the governor himself <laughs> right here. He spent a big part of the last couple of days congratulating the Texas Longhorns on that national football championship. So he quickly here put his today, maroon back on. He, he put that maroon back on, and he's here today. There's Bob Knight, the uh, winningest active division coach, third all-time, and he is 18 wins away from passing Dean Smith. We say that uh, that's going to have to be next year unless his team has one heck of a finish because they'd have to basically win all the rest of their games. Uh, he was the youngest, as you see, and, and now he's one of the veterans. 40 years in this head coaching job in Division One. A terrific ball movement right there, getting the ball in the hands of their best pure shooter, Jarius Jackson. What a way to come out of a timeout. Get the ball in the hands of your best shooter. Kirk dumps it down inside to Walker, back up to an 11-point lead. Turn around to E.C. Lotte. Obviously, the first look is always in the middle. This is Pompey. He dumps it back outside into the left corner where it won't go down. Walker scrambling for the rebound, but he can't take it. Prince has it. Here comes Tech. Texas Tech is doing a great defensive job inside on Joe Jones and 
Marlon Pompey and the other Aggie interior players. It caught again and a great pass from Dora. And who was it on the receiving end? Martin Zeno, the guy I said early on, is great moving without the basketball. Pompey tries to beat the D. That was probably blocked by Dora. Saved. And it was saved by Carter. And as Pompey went up, he's fouled. Michael Prince gets the first. Here's that last tech basket. Watch number three break hard to the bucket again. That was up close right there, but you saw Martin Zeno break right down the lane. Beautiful job moving without the basketball. That's becoming a lost art. Everyone wants to dribble off of screens or pop off screens for quick jump shots. Pompe. Texas hey. Tech spends a lot of time working on their screening. That's the first free throw, 72 percenter. As you see, the big guy, Kavalaskis, the Lithuanian, is back into the game. So you got a native of Trinidad, a native of Lithuania. And some people who aren't from this state say people from Texas are from other countries too, but that's from people not from Texas. Don't be talking about my state. We would never You're say from that. Indiana, we, but you? we would never say that. <laughs> I've lived here long enough. 24 to 13. Seven point lead. Well, Texas was a country once, right? Republic. Yes, sir. So that's kind of the same. Dora. I can get it down. And have it tied. That ball almost went under a shirt. <laughs> Tied it up, and the arrow will give it to the Aggies. Now, Michael Prince, the freshman from Plano West High School, battling in there for this miss off the attempt by Daryl Dora. Nice job by Prince positioning himself for the good offensive rebound. He and Pompey get a little tussle right there. Almost went right under Pompey's shirt. That would have been interesting. Aggies with the ball down by 11. Carter, that's a three. Out there, slapped away. That was almost a Jim Howard play. <laughs> As usual, I wasn't quick enough to get there. <laughs> right over my head. Oh, goodness. There's that bald head. <laughs> You're easy to spot, right? I am indeed. <laughs> by the way, I noticed that uh, the school that you Coached for last, Baylor has uh, got a big contest out to decide the top players of all time, and I know there'd be a few of them that you had. Well, I would think Benny Johnson, <laughs> Terry Teagle, yeah. Michael Williams. I would think uh, I was quite proud to have coached those youngsters. They taught me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Carter. Josh Carter, his second tray ball of the game. The Aggies need quite a few more of those to get back in it before halftime. Crowd thought the door had pushed. No whistle. They're, they're close enough, nine down with the defense they play. Dora fakes the shot, has to give it up. Gives up a pretty good guy, Jackson. Yeah. You don't mind giving it up to guys like that. He's got five field goals. One of them's a three. And it's 26 to 15. AC Law has gotten off to a, a really nothing start. He's got one field goal, and the rebound comes down to Tech. Daryl Dora. Door again back to Zeno. He says, I'll just take it, but he won't hit it. And we done Kavalaskis. Now that's not Martin Zeno's game right there. Coach Knight hollering at him. That's a little too quick, not what he does best. Carter looking inside, wanting to go to Bennett. Bennett gets it. Now the double team. Bennett gives it up, swings it around, the touch pass to Pompe. Nice move by Pompe. The follow by Pompe was necessary because it didn't go down the first time. Nice put back by Pompe off the penetration. Normally you can't do that against this Texas Tech defense. They'll usually have a help defender cut that drive off. Not that time. Down to none again. 26-17 and Dora. Daryl Dora with his second hoop. He averages seven a game. He's got four here in the first half. 28-17. And a whistle on the other end. I don't know. They they called one of the Aggie postmen for backing in. They called it on uh, Kavalaskis, the uh, junior college transfer inside. We'll take a break. 2.44 to go here in the first half. It's 28-17. Texas Tech.
Suzuki's giving you the green light. Go! What does the future hold? Can the Eagles find the right formula to emerge victorious? Or will fate be kind to the Yellow Jackets? And can the Blue Devils' hot streak continue to shine? Or will luck smile down on the Demon Deacons? ACC Sunday Night Hoops, this week on FSN. Tonight, after the game, on your Bushlight Southwest Sports Report, the nation's top high school football prospects suit up in San Antonio. We'll find out where some of our regional studs are headed to college. Plus, we'll have highlights as conference play begins in the Big 12 hoopla. And the Patriots start their quest for three in a row as NFL Wild Card Weekend kicks off. Tune in tonight. Tech on top by 11 could be worse. They're shooting 60% to 26%, but Jarius Jackson's been one of the big guys, five out of seven. Well, we've talked about he and Martin Zeno. They've combined for 21 of Tech's 28 points. Jarius Jackson has done it in quite a few different ways, most notably burying it from the outside, but there on the nice move to the bucket. See the good perimeter jumper, the soft touch, just a terrific player for Texas Tech. Daryl Dora, you know, you talked about how well he has played. Well, consider this. He has set a career high for assists in the game, in one game already, with seven. His career high was six. He has done great with that pass to the cutter. Well, he's 6'9". He's he can see over those defenders. He pops out so much, it's hard for a smaller man to keep him from seeing the open floor, and he's never done it better, as you said. 28-17. Zeno, oh, oh just a, there's another great pass. Zeno breaking on the backside. There's a nice assist from Jay Jackson. 30 to 17, 224 to go in the half. This is a clinic today by Texas Tech on how to move without the basketball. That's all it is to it. Admittedly, Texas A&M has missed a lot of easy shots that has kept them from keeping this game closer. Monte working down low, makes a spin move. Now gets it open to the left wing. The shot won't fall down, but nice hustle by Pompey. Wow, that was that was very impressive. AC Law for three. Well, if AC Law gets on a roll, that would be a big plus for the Texas Aggies. Let's see if that jump starts him. Get him down to within 10. Dora short. What a follow. And Zeno just had to kind of ad lib a shot and drew a foul. Zeno is just so quick. He just goes up between the Aggie defenders. Got the long arms. Can see him on the kick out back to Dora. Then he gets the miss by Zora. Dora right there between the four white shirts. So alert, so quick. Positions himself well. Harder to foul his first seat. Free throw. Zeno is now up to 13, I believe. Martin Zeno, just a sophomore from Sulphur, Louisiana. He burst on the scene last year in great fashion for the Red Raiders, starting most every game. Texas Tech, of course, last year advanced to the Sweet 16 in the big dance. Came very close to getting to the Elite Eight in that close loss to West Virginia. Red Raiders have recruited Louisiana quite well. Jackson's from Louisiana. Zeno is from Louisiana, so that's our top two scores. Martin, who is not playing in this game, coach's Jerry, decision. Jerry, hey. Louisiana. Jerry Martin, who you just mentioned, yeah. from Louisiana, he started, what, eight or nine games yeah. for the Red Raiders, so you take that. They like the state of Louisiana. Carter, Walker. Texas A&M likes the state of Texas. 16, 16 out of 19. Yeah, 16 that's out of 19 players on their roster from the state of Texas. When Billy Gillespie got here, he only had four from Texas. Well, that that's a great example as Walker goes to the lane, has it blocked out of bounds. That's a great example of that, that high school co coach connection that Billy had from being one originally, and then when he was an assistant at uh, with the Bill Self, he recruited Texas. Yep, did a great job recruiting when he was an assistant at Baylor at Tulsa and Illinois. Yeah, starting at Baylor, actually. Of course, he was a, Billy was a head coach at Colleen Ellison, got to the state Final Four tournament, coached at Coppers Cove. Great background in the state, as you mentioned. Dante White. He's praying. <laughs> He's saying, get me some more of these guys that have played pretty well in the state. Here comes the, and he will. As a matter of fact, his recruiting class for next year. There's A.C. Law. Long. Long. This guy thrives off of confidence right now. He's got it flowing. They got a shot. 
Oh, especially now. They get Kirk with that ball. Got to get rid of it and does. They've got a shot with less than a minute of getting it under 10. It's 32-22. Pompey, oh, he'll back it out. 50 seconds to go, 23 on the shot clock. Nice patience by Marlon Pompey there. Your adrenaline says, I'm going to go take it to the rack, but he pulled it out. AC Law rolls it off, and the rebound comes down to Zeno. Now, Tech will have to get the shot away. There's about a three second differential. Tech's lead is 10, 32 22. Big thing here, the Aggies, is even if they do not get a shot, make sure Tech doesn't score another basket before the half. Now Jay Jackson doing a good job out at the point right now. He's just waiting in down to about nine seconds. There he goes. Jackson. Well, and what can gets good. the basket. Great body control. Good defense by Texas A&M. AC Law. Carter for three. Yes! They gave the point on the trade. And it's halftime. Josh Carter, the third three ball of the game for the freshman, keeping the Aggies in it, bringing them within nine. They are definitely within it. It's only a nine-point game at the half, 34 to 25. Texas Tech with the edge at the intermission. Stay with us. We'll have all of our stories back from the day in sports, and we'll also be recapping this first half. That's all coming up. 34-25, Tech on top here at the intermission. Here's what you can expect when you buy your furniture today at Gallery Furniture. Expect, number one, to see a giant selection of name brand furniture and electronics in stock and on sale. Number two, the guaranteed low, low price. And number three, when you buy your furniture today at Gallery Furniture, you can expect to have that furniture and electronics in your living room, dining room, or bedroom tonight. No waiting, no delay, no frustrating back order sip. What you can expect at Gallery Furniture is better quality, lower price, and your furniture and electronics delivered today, guaranteed. Open the 10, Gallery Furniture saves you. Money today. I hurt myself today. The Shield premieres next week only on FX. Check local listings. Join host Dana Larson and Scout.com Insight. This is a Southwest Sports Report update. And welcome into the FSN Studios. I'm Bill Jones. We're at the